Unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, are still primarily military in nature, so it can be difficult to get up close to them. But the components for autonomous vehicles have come down dramatically in cost, opening up the field for new entrants, including academic research groups. When the engineer heard about a team at Southampton University who came top in a recent government competition for building surveillance UAVs, we decided to pay them a visit to get an up-close look at the technology that powers these flying robots. From the outset of building a UAV, it's really about understanding what the user wants. Uh, so it's, it's understanding what's the requirements uh, from the user or from the person who's going to buy the system. Um, and those things tend to be um, endurance, how long does it, do they want it to fly, what sensors do they want it on board, how portable does it have to be, and of course, how much can they pay for it, how much do they want it to cost at the end of the day. <clears throat> so those are the sort of overriding factors. Um, you can make anything if you have enough budget. You know, you can make the most exotic sensors and, and so on. Really, um, we're trying to build something which is relatively low cost to get it in the hands of the people that need it, <clears throat> which are the frontline soldiers in our case, in the military context, but of course civilian domains opening up soon. The main step when we first started actually looking into what we wanted to carry. So we started with the amount of sensors that we want to carry we also looked at the endurance that we want to go and how far the system needs to actually operate. So that's, if you work backwards from there, we had to find the best combination between prop and motor configurations. And you know, my supervisor would be the first to say there's actually hundreds and thousands of different combinations, if not millions, of prop and motor configurations. It's about picking the one that's best for you. And if it's components off the shelf, which is you know, help, going to help drive the cost down, it's it's a lot more easier. So the main unit, it has uh, the main battery which actually sits straight inside so that just slides directly in and out. You can see it's quite, we had to squeeze everything around the system so... It's the single biggest component yeah. of the whole system. And it's the heaviest as well out of all the components. Um, then you have your various uh, antennas which screen. So you have two uh, diversity antennas for the actual uh, control which you actually you don't have to uh, use, you can fly directly from uh, the GPS waypoints. We have two cameras, so we have a pan and tilt uh, one gram camera at the front with a wide angle lens and a little dome so it's all waterproof to a certain degree. Um, on the bottom, it can, <laughs> it's a little bit messy now but like I said, in constant development, we have a downwards looking camera which uh, again, wide angle lens and that's able to get a 160 degree field of view. So that's the main unit. That's I'd say more than half the mass of the whole system. Then you assemble the legs, so the legs are easily located right here. And they're as simple as just slide in and that's it. Underneath here you have the main uh, arms which include the motors and rotors. So these are magnetic, uh, magnetic, connectors. Ma magnetic connectors which hold the whole system together so it doesn't rattle around and doesn't get damaged. And it, it works quite nicely. You put it out, you have your carbon fibre arm with your carbon fibre props and your military spec connector and all three, all three arms are identical so you're able to plug it into any one of the arm configurations and it goes in and you have that nice positive click lock and that's, that's the symbol of the UAV. When you look past the military and you know already budgets are, are becoming uh, less and less in terms of we are out of Afghanistan in, in just over a year's time um, the budgets for these things have already sort of dried up uh, in the military sp speak. But these things have to work, you know, these things have to be, um, you know, prove themselves to pay capable of doing certain jobs. I mean, I'll give you one in instance that <clears throat> is an idea that my, one of my PhD students came up with. What about organ donors? You know, you, you, you have a limited time to get an organ from A to B. There's someone who needs it for heart transplant, liver, lung transplant. Um, and currently we have a motorcyclist who drives you know, as fast as he can through traffic. Well, maybe one of these should be on a, on a building on top of one hospital and fly it straight to the top of the other hospital, avoiding all of the traffic and any obstacles in its path. And it's just you know, from A to B in the fastest possible time with a light payload. And so that's just one thing that could potentially be a future. There's literally hundreds. So there's, there's, there's loads.